could you identify the process that we just saw in the last clip well it is about the process of melting and welding of iron but i'm sure you're questioning why we are suddenly talking about the melting and welding of iron in a lesson on vital villages and thriving towns well let me explain this to you in greater detail iron and steel are very important in our world because these are required to make different kinds of things the houses you and i live in are made of iron rods steel is used to make utensils in which we cook our food as well as eat our food so iron and steel are very important in our modern world but iron and steel have not been used since times immemorial during the new stone age agriculture developed because of a whole host of factors because people started settling near the river banks which is why they now started pursuing agriculture by staying in one place for longer period of time and after people started pursuing agriculture and settling in a place they now started forming proper settlements which gave birth to villages now the growth of agriculture is also directly depended on the growth of the use of iron tools how is it so this is because different kinds of iron tools are also used in the pursuit of agriculture and this growth of agriculture is also very intricately tied to the growth of population because when people started forming settlements and villages the population in those regions invariably increased and in order to feed a larger number of people more and more food crops had to be produced and more food crops meant the growth of the pursuit of agriculture so all these are very closely tied be that the use of iron tools or the growth of agriculture or the evolution of villages to towns and cities so in this regard i'm sure you can now understand why we began this lesson by talking about the melting and welding of iron now in this lesson we will focus upon iron tools the growth of agriculture and how these two together contributed to the evolution of cities from villages and towns so let us now begin this discussion on iron tools and the growth of agriculture now in the indian subcontinent iron has been in use for 3000 years or more so from this you can understand that the usage of iron is not new iron tools have been made by people in ancient and prehistoric times as well but how do we get to know about the usage of various kinds of iron tools thousands of years ago we get to know from different kinds of iron tools that have been recovered from various archaeological sites and it is from these excavations that we got to know that different sorts of iron tools like sickle ax were used and now we come to a discussion on megalithic burials but the question that arises in this regard is that what is a megalith A megalith is a piece of stone or multiple pieces of stones which were used in ancient times to build different kinds of structures. Now in ancient times the tradition was such that megalithic burials were made. So here you can see a megalithic burial there are a number of stones which have been used on the ground to build a burial. now in this megalithic burials human corpses were buried along with different stones different skeletons of animals and different kinds of potteries jewelries now after excavating these megalithic burials archaeologists have found traces of these kinds of iron tools that were used by people around 3000 years ago 
So, in this sense, megalithic burials constitute a very important source of information if we have to trace how and when iron tools were used in the ancient Indian subcontinent. But when the pursuit of agriculture was given more importance in order to feed the growing population, the growth of iron tools also happened. Now, how are iron tools associated with agriculture? In the beginning of this lesson, we talked about how iron tools are required to pursue agriculture. Now, the pursuit of agriculture or the growing of food crops entails different stages, different activities together help in the growth of food crops. And in these different stages, various kinds of iron tools were used by the ancient people. Now, in this regard, mention must be made of a particular kind of iron tool which was known as the axe. Now, this axe was used for clearing of forests. Now, why was the clearing of forest important? This is because earlier on most of the places were densely forested regions. But when settlements started giving birth to villages and population was growing, people now required more tracts of land to inhabit. That is to say, people now required more tracts of lands for the growing population to stay, which is why these forests had to be cleared and in this regard, iron tools like the eggs was used. Now, more and more population have been housed in a region. Another thing that needs to be taken care of is food. The population needs to be fed food. And in order to increase agricultural production, the iron tool called plowshare was used. This is a plowshare. It helps in increasing agricultural production. So, the growth of iron tools happened in tandem with or simultaneously with the growth of population and the evolution of villages to towns and cities. Now, only these iron tools were not sufficient for the agricultural production to increase, which is why new agricultural techniques were also implemented. These agricultural techniques pertained to irrigation, transplantation and various other things. Now, these agricultural techniques like irrigation, transplantation, which means planting of a same plant in a different region for the purpose of better agricultural productivity was very, very important when it came to feeding the growing population. Now, during this time, various artificial methods of watering the soil like the use of pumps or sprays also became prevalent. And all this was meant to increase the agricultural yield or productivity. Now, the ancient Indian subcontinent witnessed a period of growth of evolution in ways more than one. In the social sense, we can see how villages were evolving, how settlements evolved to give birth to villages and how villages were also gaining more importance and evolving to towns. Now, in this regard, newer kinds of irrigation works were also built. Irrigation works like canals, tanks or even artificial lakes were very important for the purpose of providing more and more water for drinking as well as agricultural purposes. When agricultural activities flourished at great length, there was a lot of extra produce as well. Because at all points, the agricultural produce was not required to feed the population. And what happened to this extra produce? Now, this extra produce from the villages was collected by the rulers. Why did the village rulers collect this extra produce? They required this extra produce in order to gain revenue that they needed for 
administration and military purposes. So previously people did not take care of administrative and military purposes. These things were not prevalent in the small settlements. But with the growing of villages, proper administration, proper law and order was very very important and crucial. Which is why the rulers needed more and more revenue to take care of these things. And the extra produce from agricultural activities went into the pursuit of proper administrative and military purposes. Now these villages were places where agriculture was mostly practiced. But only agriculture could not sustain the growing population. Which is why the growing population now started moving out of the villages. Now where did these people go? And what kind of professions did these people pursue? These people pursued a whole host of professions like pottery, weaving, trade activities. And out of the villages they now formed towns. So they moved out of the villages to form towns where different people from different rungs of the societies started staying together. Now the extra produce that was gained from the villages also went into the establishment and the flourishing of towns. Now the flourish of towns in the Indian subcontinent happened around the 6th century BCE and this continued to happen throughout the centuries. These towns now started gaining importance in terms of trade and commercial activities. As we just mentioned that people were pursuing different kinds of profession and here we should definitely mention trade and commercial activities which were given great importance and stress by the people who moved out of villages to form the towns. Now the growth of iron tools has been very important in the history of the Indian subcontinent. Now why am I saying so? Firstly we learnt about how the growth of iron tools helped in the growth of agricultural pursuits which helped to feed the growing population. Now in the ancient Indian subcontinent socio-economic developments also happened owing to the growth of the usage of iron tools. So can you imagine how interesting this is? Because iron tools that were used in different activities also contributed to socio-economic developments. How is it so? This is because people now started moving to the towns and in the towns people pursued different activities and for these activities they required different kinds of iron tools and iron items. And when these people continued with their trade activities, economic development also took place in the Indian subcontinent. So as we mentioned in the beginning of this lesson that all these as in the growth of iron tools, the growth of population, the increase of agricultural production and the evolution of villages all happened simultaneously and these were all intricately linked. Now the socio-economic developments that happened chiefly due to the use of iron tools in agriculture and military led to the rise of something. Now how were iron tools important in military aspects? Different kinds of weapons which the military used at that point of time were also made of iron. And military forces needed to be strengthened when the towns were growing in strength and power and influence. In order to protect the towns from any kind of foreign attack, different kinds of weapons were used and these weapons were also made of iron. Now all these together contributed to the rise of the 16 Mahajanapadas. Now what were these Mahajanapadas? Now for this we will have to understand what were the Janapadas. Now the Janapadas were kingdoms in the ancient Indian subcontinent. The Aryans had formed their tribes which were known as the Jana. 
so the aryan tribes were known as jana the aryans inhabited mostly the northern part of the indian subcontinent their tribes were known as jana and the word pada means foot so together these words jana and pada gave rise to janapada now these janapadas were kingdoms of these aryan tribes owing to different kinds of developments in the socio economic respects these janapadas now evolved into the mahajanapadas these mahajanapadas were oligarchic republics these mahajanapadas were kingdoms that were very powerful and influential in the northern part of the indian subcontinent during the ancient times now there were 16 mahajanapadas in the ancient indian subcontinent let us quickly make a list of the 16 mahajanapadas those 16 mahajanapadas would be kamboja gandhara kuru matsya surasena panchala kosala malla vatsa kashi vriji magadha anga sedi avanti and asmaka so these were the 16 mahajanapadas in the ancient indian subcontinent now let me ask you a question before proceeding with this lesson any further how many mahajanapadas emerged in the ancient indian subcontinent were there 15 12 16 or 14 mahajanapadas well the correct answer is 16 16 mahajanapadas emerged in the ancient indian subcontinent now these 16 mahajanapadas in the ancient indian subcontinent emerged between the 6th and the 4th centuries bce these were very important centers of power because here trade activities flourished which contributed to economic development as well now when these mahajanapadas were gaining in power and importance and wealth and resources they needed proper capital cities to take care of the administration in those mahajanapadas so this now gave birth to the cities cities in the ancient indian subcontinent developed from around 2500 years ago and the cities emerged as the capitals of these mahajanapadas i'm sure you have heard the name of a very popular city in the ancient indian subcontinent which was pataliputra now pataliputra was the capital city of the mahajanapada of magadha and pataliputra emerged as an important center of power as an important economic center during the rule of the mauryan empire and even subsequently during the rule of the gupta empire so this is how cities came into being in the ancient indian subcontinent now in this lesson we have talked about how the villages slowly gave way to towns and those also gave way to the cities we talked about how iron tools have played a very important role in this evolution this is because when we have to trace the growth of villages to towns and cities iron would invariably be associated with it now agriculture has also played a very important role in this india has been a predominantly agricultural country since times immemorial and this point testifies to the same idea in our subsequent lessons we will be focusing on two such very important cities in the northern and the southern halves of the indian subcontinent that emerged during the ancient times
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.